Hello, my name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986, and I want to say thank you for uh, tuning in and trying to figure out something more about your dog, because there's something that I want to say that I think a lot of people just aren't questioning. And the simple questions that I want to ask today is, what happens when? You tell your dog to sit, you tell your dog to down, you tell your dog to place, you tell your dog to have a perfect recall, you tell your dog to have a perfect heel next to you, you tell your dog to have be able to send them to the crate from a distance, you tell them all these things, and it doesn't fix your issues that you got going on. What happens then? What happens when the situation goes on that you spent all this time, all this money, all, all, all just, just the sacrifice, I'm going to say, to, to get your dog to understand all these cues and commands, and it still doesn't fix the issues that you have on your day-to-day, -day, every day. What do you do next? What do, where do we go now? Why is it that we have a lot of people out here that are running into this scenario that when I'm in this said training situation that I'm training the dog, it responds really, really well. When I got food, I got treats, I've got toys, I've got all this excessive praise, it looks really good. But once I turn my back and I stop that training session, the dog goes right back to the same old stuff again. What do we do next? What's the next game plan here? Because I can't just keep the dog on place. I can't just keep the dog in the crate all the time. I can't just keep the dog in the down all day. I can't keep the dog in the sit all day. Once they become able to move around and do what they do outside of that training scenario situation that you got going on, and it goes back to the same old mess again, what's going on here? How is it that all this stuff looks really good in the moment, but in the, where I'm gonna say is the real world scenarios, it's failing. Like, to the point that it seems like everything that I did was for nothing. What do we do next? Where, what's next from there? Because that's something that I think a, a lot of us should really try to figure out what the heck's actually truly going on and the problems that are actually happening. As opposed to listening to what someone says to you, it's your fault and it's the dog's fault. That's a new thing a lot of people love to say. It's the dog's fault today. Dogs are this, dogs are that. Dog won't come along. Dog is trash. Dog is no good. But yet you as a trainer, where I'll say someone that had a trainer, was able to maneuver the dog and it looked really good. But when it gets back with the owner and it's not doing that same stuff, how is it the dog's fault? And at the same time, how is it the human's fault? If the dog is doing what it's doing with the, the trainer looking really nice, but it's not doing with the human. So it must not be the dog's fault. It must not be the human's fault. So then what do we do next? What's, what's the situation that we have to figure out now? It's something that I don't think a lot of people are like, putting two and two together here. You, I think that our expectations of what we're looking for from a dog have gotten completely messed up. That we think that if our dog can do this beautiful looking uh, heel work, that it's a good dog, it's a nice dog, it's a well-trained dog. A dog that can stay in a down like this, that's a good dog. Like, wow, those are nice dogs. But what do we do when I tell that dog, okay, and we're, we're now able to just run around and do what we do? Such as get the dog into the bath because it needs a bath. Such as trim the dog's nails because the dog needs a nail trim. Such as time to come feed the dog, it's time to eat. Such as trying to get the dog to stop pestering me at 5.30 in the morning. I'm trying to get up at 7 every day, but my dog is just all up on me. It's 5.30, man. I need that extra hour and a half before I have to get up. How do we convince the dogs to stop doing stuff like that? How do we convince the dogs to stop trying to get in the middle of battling when you try to go and hug your boyfriend, hug your wife, Hug your chill, oh, man, I've had this as well, people. Hugging your children, that the dog gets into that, what we call is reactive mode, that it starts to show teeth, it starts to growl, it starts to lunge, it starts to jump, it starts to do crazy stuff when you try to touch someone else. I've even been in a relationship with someone once, that if you try to fake like hit them, that dog <laughs> looking at you like, don't touch them. What do we do in those? Because the sit doesn't work with that, right? The down doesn't work with that. The place doesn't work with that. The recall doesn't really do anything because what are you going to call them to you when you're already in the middle of it? Like, what, what, what's going on here that that's the primary thing that everyone thinks is going to be like that magic thing to fix all the dogs if all the dogs just knew better obedience commands? Why, why is it that we've gotten to the situation that we look at dogs as that's what a good dog is as opposed to a good dog being a dog that just listens to us from what we say and what we do? Not having to put them in a specific situation to make them look good, and then outside of that situation, things are just chaos. How has it gotten to the point that we're not like looking at the, the true issues that are going on with the dog? We're just trying to run away from it. And we're running away from it, just collecting money in a way, and just watching things just keep on getting worse and worse. Why is it that we're just trying to put a one-size-fits-all on the situation, that it's gonna work for all? 
as opposed to realizing that each dog is totally different and each human is totally different. And we need to stop sitting out here saying that if the dog isn't getting better because of the sits and the downs and the places and all that, those commands and stuff, then get rid of the dog because the dog is the dog. It's the genetics of the dog. It's this of the dog. It's that of the dog. The dog, the dog. That just doesn't make sense to me. That's just to me running away from what's really going on. And I don't think that, you know, the more and more I keep on researching and studying and watching and doing what I'm doing, I watch a lot of dog training stuff lately, this past year, I'm going to say, that I realize why it's challenging to have a set dog training channel do anything. Uh, Oreo, get down. Because once you make all the videos of how to get your dog to down, how to get your dog to sit, how to get your dog to, to go in the place bed, how to get your dog to do these things, you're pretty much done at that moment. Because I, in my opinion, I think that that's just what majority of people have the understanding of. If it's anything past that, it's, they don't even know what to do. They have no idea what's going on here. They have no idea how to make anything happen. That's why it's so easy today for someone to, to come up to be a dog trainer because to get a dog to sit, to get a dog to down, to get a dog to do these things is like ridiculously easy. It's so easy. It's so, that is so simple. But now to get a dog to stop growling at your spouse when you're hugging each other, a sick command's not gonna fix that. Down's not gonna fix that. To get your dog to get the heck off the counter, behind your back, you know, in front of your face is one thing, but behind your back, it's not so easy. To get your dog to understand to leave me alone when I want to be left alone because you're, you're hounding, you're pestering me right now. That's not so easy because then just giving them treats to get away, they're going to come back. Give a treat to go away, they're going to come back. You're just going to be playing this game back and forth and back and forth. Then you know what heads into the, the situation here is frustration. Once frustration creeps in, dog is officially one at that moment. You are now that weak member to that dog because that dog knows how to push your buttons to get you to react and get you to respond. That's interesting because I do a lot of research on this whole concept of, I'm just going to say that word straight up, the way that I see what dogs are. Narcissists, man. Dogs are all about themselves. Dogs are all about seeing themselves and wanting what they want, getting what they want, and just desiring and telling you, you better do it, you better do it, you better do it. Your entire world revolves around me. It revolves around me, 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 me. That's what I see in dogs, personally. I see that they are just all about what can I get out of this person and I don't care what I have to do to get it from this person. I don't care what I have to do to, to well, irritate this person to get what I want. And the more frustrated that you get, the more excited that they are. And I've seen this countless of times now that when you start to get frustrated, dang, John, you gotta, oh, cause you keep, I know what's going on with you. He eating stuff behind my back that I have been letting go. Uh, you can go ahead and get out of here. Okay. You can get out of here with that mess. Get, get out of here. <laughs> I just seen the countless of times that once you start to get frustrated with that dog, that dog starts to just get so excited. They just turn from like, like they're just, they're, their face gets so happy. The, just, the chase game is the one that I really, really just see the dogs get so excited when you get mad. The chewing up your couch is the one that I see they get super excited. The chewing your shoes up, the chewing your socks, to chewing on your baby children, to chewing on your husband, to chewing on anything. Man, the dogs just get so excited to see you get like, just mad. The dog's like, what's up, man? What's up, how's it going? The dogs are only caring about themselves. And they don't really care much about us. I don't think the way that a lot of people really think that they do. They appear that they are really, really for us because it's a matter of what can they get. Now, when you're dealing with something like that, and you're dealing with, I'm not gonna say all dogs are this way, but just most all, most all, if you're looking at a, situation that you're trying to find help because you're you're stuck and you don't know what's going on i'm going to almost slap a guarantee and say i'm talking about the type of dog that you got if you don't have any issues at all your dog is just perfect you know you just speak and it moves with you and you you can go and it, like i said i got one like that i've got a border collie like that he he's just in tune with me he's like dude he's, he's like straight, I'm straight up use just crazy words master anything you want master i'll do it for you You want me to die you want me to this you want me to this he's just on board with everything but i got five other dogs that are not like that at all and I've got one that is just, that Johnny man, that is just all about self. And this is something that I think that, just to throw some extra language out there for people to just look at your dogs and maybe do a little extra research to try to figure some things out. But if you try to come at that dog that is just being all about self and give it treats, thinking that that's going to be able to get it out of it, you're going to be very, very mistaken. Because what that animal is looking for from you is to get you to respond, get you to react, get you to, to, get to do something. And doing something in a said happy way or a negative way, it's both the same to the dog. The dog is still just, it's getting what it wants. And when it's constantly getting what it wants, that's when you're constantly running into a very, very sticky situation. 
But I'm going to say there's one thing that I know that these dogs will change their entire life view and life everything with, is if you start to deny that dog. That's why for me, when you're having issues with your dog, the number one thing that I'm going to say to do is not try to get your dog to sit, not try to get your dog to down, not try to get your dog to place, not try to get your dog to do any of these things. Get away from the tricks. The one thing that you, I'm going to say, is going to do to really get your dog to understand that there's a new situation going on here, to, to get them out of their love of self, to respond and react and recognize you, is to do nothing with the dog. Is to have the dog around you, on leash. Stop touching your dog. Stop petting your dog. Stop praising your dog. Stop looking at your dog. Stop interacting with your dog. And start making your dog have the, have the absolute desire to, I, it wants to do whatever it takes to get to you. Your dog is going to try to dig. You can't respond to it. Your dog's going to want to try to chew on you. I'm not talking bite you. Chewing and biting, I'm going to say, is two different things. Chewing is just, just a little nibble and trying to, try to get you to like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. They're going to start to do crazy stuff. They're going to start barking. They're going to start whining. They're going to start growling. They're going to start <sighs> making sounds like that even. I've seen this. And they're going to constantly keep making these noises and doing this stuff to get you to react. And the more that you don't react, the faster that your dog is just going to look at you and have a whole change of self-realization that, man, none of this stuff is getting to this person, so what is? So that's when you're going to change your dog from getting you to just do for it that it's now going to start to do for you because it's going to try to figure out if it's not getting what it needs. And I can go to the terms of talking about a narcissist again. If the narcissist is not getting their said desires met from that, from that person, they're going, to, they're going to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, and it starts off in a, I'm going to say a negative way, as opposed to a positive way, to get what they want, to get what they need. And, and, if it, and if it takes them to have to get to the point of finally just saying, you know what, I need you because I can't actually survive by myself. Because that's the truth of the, rea the reality of what that term is all about. They, they need somebody. But it doesn't mean that they need them in the way that they've been doing it. It just means that they need them and then we can come in and be that leader to them to show them that, you don't need th in this approach. There's a different way to get what you want without having to hurt and destroy, without having to be savage and ruthless, without having to just be needy and just, 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 uh, just pushy, but in a way that is going to be able to work for everyone around. It's just some things that I want some people to think about because if you're, if you're running that situ situation that you've done all the, the said training and your dog is still just crazy, <laughs> is the easiest way for me to say it. And you're just not really finding that you're getting any sort of help. I'm telling you that there's something else that's going on here. For some dogs, for some dogs, for some. I'm going to say the less of the some. Teaching them all these commands is going to be giving you a great dog. It's going to give you an awesome dog. Because when your dog is pushy, you can set them to place, and they'll lay down, and they'll sleep, and they'll just hang out. They'll just be like, okay, whatever. With some dogs that, are, that, that run in that scenario, they're, they're jumping up on you. You can tell them down. They'll get down. They'll lay down. And they'll just get off of you. And they're like, okay. And again, I've got a dog like that. It's uh, anything I say goes. And the more that I put, like I said, training, I put the weight command on him, put a, a good recall on him, I put, I put all these stays on him, he, he looks really good. He looks really nice. But, but when you run into that scenario that the other dogs, that that stuff isn't working for, you tell them to go to place, and they look at you like, no. If you got a treat, I'll do it. But no, even if you have a treat, he's still like, well, that's still not a good enough treat. Can't you get up and get in the fridge and go, <laughs> this is dogs, people. Can't you get up and get in the fridge and get something different and I'll pick and choose which one I want and then I might get on the place bed. Now I ain't got time for this because I need you to do it right now. I don't want to have to set this scenario up for, for five hours and then have to get over here and, and get on this. I just want you to get on the bed now. It's easy. It's not so easy at that moment. And the same thing, you got a dog that's jumping on you and you're like, hey, get off me, get off me. And the dog's like, well, you know, I really want you to play with me right now so I bring the ball and I shove it on you and the only way I'm going to get you to stop uh, get me to stop pestering you is to let's go play fetch for the next hour that we're, we're going to do this because I'm telling you we're doing this now those are the dogs that I'm talking about that those stays and all that stuff is not working so what do we do now because that's the dogs that I'm going to say are all about self that they don't give a crap about you they care about themselves they care about what they can get they care about what they desire they care about what they need and they do not care about you at all and that's why I think it's a fantastic thing today <laughs> Because the more I read my Bible, the more I understand the progressions of what we are and what we're all about as human beings. That there's a lot of human beings on this planet that are just all about self, people. It just is what it is. It's what we, in reality, have come to just have to survive and live by to be able to just make it. Because if we try to be so, this is just unfortunate. I, don't, I didn't create this and it just, I'm in it, but it just is what it is. 
It's unfortunate that in reality, most people are not looking out for you in a positive way. Most people are looking out for what can they get themselves. What can they have themselves? What are they all about themselves? And they're gonna talk to you and get to you in a way to be able to make sure that they can get better. And if you happen to get better along the way, cool. But that wasn't actually their main goal. Their main goal was to figure out how to make themselves look better and get better. And then there's where I'm gonna say there's the majority that's that way. And I didn't create this system, I didn't make it. And I don't want it to have to be this way. I want it to be a way that we all can be able to have it. We don't need to worry. We don't need to this. And we don't need to, to challenge each other and fight each other and beg for each other to be able to just survive on this planet. But that's something that's going on with these dogs today that is very, very interesting. That they're almost in this like living in this survival stance that if you don't give them this treat right now, they're not going to get another one. As opposed to the dog understanding that, no, it, it's going to. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. There's an overabundance out here for all of us to be able to have. That's something that, you know, a lot of dogs go into this, like, resource guardian and guarding stuff. They got to guard the, the wife for, for, from the husband. Got to start chewing on them because, or biting them, not chewing on them at that point, biting on them because there might not be another one like that for that dog in its brain. So it's got to it's gotta protect it to make sure that nothing else can take it away. Nothing else can take its food away. That's why it's going to fight over food. Nothing else can take its bone away. That's why it's going to fight over its bone. Nothing else could take it because it's, it's in its, this is it. I, I can't have any more and, 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 and I have to have this one. And I'm going to make sure that the whole world can't get it because this is mine. This is mine. It's all mine. No one can have it. No one can look at it. No one can talk to it. No one can be around it. And think about this, people. I know a lot of people, and it's not just me that deal with a lot of this stuff in, in your life, but you've had people in your life that have pretty much made you get rid of everyone in your life. They just started to isolate you. They started to just make you be by yourself. And some of y'all, your dogs are doing that to you. Some of y'all, y'all can't go nowhere do anything because of what your dog may do and what your dog's done. Some of y'all can't have no friends over because of the dog, what the dog is doing. Some of y'all are not allowed to, to go to board your dog at any facility because a dog is wild. You know, you can't board it at the facilities because it's, it's a, what do they call it, a bite risk or something like that. Your dog has consumed your entire world. Your dog is telling you when to wake up. Your dog is telling you when to sleep. Your dog is telling you what to eat and, and when to eat and how to eat even and how much you're supposed to eat. Because if you're eating too much, they're going to try to take it from you. And your dog is telling you when it's okay to get on the bed and when you can sit on the couch. Your dog is telling you who you can hang out with and when you can hang out with them. Your dog is telling you all of this stuff. And it's forcing this and demanding this from you. Because your dog is running the household. Your dog has consumed everything. And the dog is only caring about itself. And it's not caring about you. And that's something that is... is just what I've come to just really see what's going on nowadays, that we just are allowing dogs to run our world as opposed to us as humans telling the dog what it is that we're looking for. And being that solid leader to that dog of saying, I know you want to try to push me around, but I'm not going to allow you to do that because I'm the, for one, and hopefully everyone thinks the same thing. I hope we're all on the same page with what I'm about to say. For one, I'm more intelligent than the dog. I hope we all as humans understand that, that we are way more intelligent than what dogs are. Dogs may know how to be able to go find some food, but I promise you, you as a human can do that times a million because that's why we have farms today and we have what the, the, the industrial, all, we got all this stuff, man. I'm out here, I just raised a thousand pounds worth of food all within this little area right here for me to be able to eat and consume. I'm way smarter than what a dog can do. I know how to store it. I know how to put stuff in, and package it so that I keep it for long term. Uh, we are way, dogs are nothing compared to us as humans. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. I hope we are all on the same page with that because if we're not, we're gonna be struggling here for a second with actually being able to find some help with your dog. Because your dog is pushing you around because it, thinks that it's smarter than you and you need to take a step back and realize no you are way way more intelligent than this dog and these dogs will si finally just come back to grips and understand their role their position who they are and what they're all about and that's why I say to completely ignore this dog because when this dog is not getting what it needs it's going to go through a, a battle in itself it's going to go through a fight it's going to go through a struggle it's going to have times that it's just it's it, it, it don't know what to do, and that's where you're going to start to see the dog just look wild and crazy in reality because it's, it's not getting what it, what it wants, not what it needs. You're giving your dog, I'm tell, I guarantee you, everything that it needs. If it's alive right now, you're giving it what it needs to live. Food, water, and it really doesn't even need shelter. It just needs food and water. Food. It go find its own water very easily. It can find food, uh, uh, food easily, but not as easily. So if the dog is alive, you're giving the dog what it needs. The dog doesn't need pets all day. 
The dog doesn't need praise all day. The dog doesn't need any of that all the time. The dog doesn't need it. And, and the dog can survive without that. The dog can excel by giving them stuff like that. But if the dog is pushing you and telling you what to do, that's the last thing that you should be doing with that dog. Because that dog is only going to continue to keep on pushing you around. So you need to let that dog know that there's a, <laughs> that's the way I'm saying it, a new sheriff in town. There's some new rules coming in town. You can't do the same stuff that we used to do, thinking that the dog is going to get better. We can't add new commands and, and, and different routines even with my dog and think that that's going to change the situation. No, we need to change up everything we used to do with that dog. Everything you thought that you wanted to do with that dog, you are no longer allowed to do right now. Because that dog is going to continue to keep on just pushing you and pushing you and pushing you. And pushing you to the point that it's going to keep on driving you to a high level of frustration. And that frustration is just making your dog so darn happy. It's making it so happy. This is stuff that I just see that I don't know how to talk about in a way for more people to really just understand without just speaking about it in a way of using specific terms that I know a lot of us understand. So that's something that, in reality, I would want as many people as possible to get on this YouTube and start typing in what is, a, a, what is that, that term, a narcissistic personality disorder, and just watch a couple, like, three, five-minute videos about it. And just, just hear what these people are saying. And then and just sit and think, like, is my dog like that? Just, 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 that's something that I would recommend for, for anyone to do. Just seriously, like, look up that if you've never heard about it. And if you heard someone talk about it and you're not sure exactly what that's about, I'm telling you, just do, do a quick little YouTube search. You're already here. You can shut this off and go look up that and listen to the professionals talk about it. That I, I know a lot about that stuff, but I'm not going to claim to be a professional in it because I don't work in that all day. I just work with chickens and dogs. And, and these dogs are going to, what they're talking about is going to sound very, very similar to how your dog is acting and treating around you in your household. It's all about itself. It doesn't care about anything else but it. It's not caring about how you, are you doing okay? It's not caring about that. It's like, gimme, 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 gimme. And if you don't gimme, I'm going to do something to make you have to give it to me. And then you still don't want to give it to you after I do something, it's just going to keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. That's where you need to change. You need to change that. And the only way to break that cycle is to stop doing everything that that dog is in reality desiring outside of just giving it food and water. Because you need to break that cycle. And that cycle is not going to be easy to break because they're so used to just touching them and holding them and interacting. It's like, oh, why did I get a dog in the first place if I'm not allowed to interact with it? It's like, I hear you. I hear you but you've got the wrong relationship status going on with your dog right now. And your dog has got the wrong uh, lens that it views you right now. And that's why you gotta do something extremely drastic right now to change what's going on. And then we can go back to, I can pet you and I can hang out with you, I can, I can do, so that the dog understands that it's here to, to work for you. It's not here for you to work for it. And that's where I believe that majority of people today that are, that are having problems, not majority of people, but the ones that are having the problems with your dogs, that the sit's not working, the down's not working, all those things that you, the, the trainers are saying is gonna be that magic cure to fix all dogs, it's not working for you. If it's not working for you, I'm telling you there's something else going on, that something else is going on is your dog is running you. Your dog is telling you what to do. And that is not the role of a dog. It is way too stressful for them to handle that. That's stuff for us as human beings to handle. It's hard for human beings to have their own stuff and, and, and uh, be able to put people to work and, and have their own stuff out there like that. It's hard for us as humans. Most people, most humans default to, where do we go? We will go work for people because that's, that's just, that's the easier route. For a human, if it's challenging to be the leader, how challenging do you think it must be for the dog to be the leader? Because dogs are, they're, they're working off animalistic instincts and that's not what we as humans are doing. And if it's easy for a human to default to that, the dog, that's why, that's why you have, what I'm going to say is chaos going on. Chaos. Chaos. That's the only way I can say it, because that's what I see. And we can all try to lie about it, like, oh, it's, it's not that bad. And it is that bad. It is that bad, because your dog is pushing you around. Your dog is telling you what to do. Your dog is telling you when to wake up, when to sleep, what to eat, how to eat, where to eat, where you can't go, what you can't do. Your dog is telling you all this. A dog. A dog. Let alone a human being coming into your life like that. But a dog. A dog that's doing that to you. That's what I want more people to really think about. Just think about that concept, that your dog is not giving you the freedom to be able to live your own life. A dog. Not, a, not, not some grown man, or a lot of y'all call them grown little boys that are, that are out here evil, being malicious to girls. Not no woman out here. Not no child. Not none of that, but a dog. 
A dog is limiting your life right now from being able to do what you want to do. That's something that I think more people should really put a lot of thought into. Thank you.